We have a lot of virtual reality stuff coming out this year and a lot of people making content for virtual reality from indie developers to established game developers and also, well, Lucasfilm. Lucasfilm has an, a research department called ILM X Lab, and we're here today at their facility to try out one of their new experiments called Trials on Tatooine and chat with one of their technology leads. So check it out. Hey Rob, it's great to meet you. Good to meet you. Great to have us here at uh, Lucasfilm. Um, this is a wonderful installation you guys have here. Thank you, you so much for coming. So much cool stuff. Now, as the Chief Technology Officer of Lucasfilm, um, you work with a lot of the different departments in the filmmaking side, on the entertainment side, but you guys are also diving into new technologies. Exactly. So ILM X Lab, um, tell me what that's, what's that about? How did it come about? So ILM X Lab is about immersive entertainment. So what is it? what kind of story stories can we tell in virtual reality or augmented reality or location-based entertainment, places where we can put the whole world around you. And um, you know, what are the storytelling opportunities? What are the te enabling technologies that are going to make that possible? And XLab is exploring all of those things. When you think of two things that meet together, <coughs> I, the, the ILM side and lab side, it's really technology and story. Right, those that's are exactly two right. things that mesh together, and that's, I mean, you guys have been just doing story for a long time, and when people think of ILM, you think of graphics, visual yes. effects. Uh, how has ILM used a technology in production and pre-production, and how do those technologies fit into what XLab's doing? Yeah, so ILM has a long history, as you know, of, of developing and researching new technologies for filmmaking, and we're, we, we found that all that technology and a lot of the work we've done in virtual production and other real-time techniques we use on set, those are directly applicable to virtual reality and these other experiences. So we formed up this team of people, some from ILM, some from the games world. We put this team together to actually create um, the advanced development group, this group who was going to try to reinvent entertainment with real-time graphics, and this group has been doing this now for the last several years, and you're seeing some of the output from this research and development, these experiments that we've been doing now for several, several years. So technologies <laughs> like a tracking emotion capture, performance capture, and tracking uh, objects in a physical space using you know QR codes, virtual markers, these are things that people in the virtual reality community recognize as kind of those are the technologies that allow modern virtuality here to happen. So, but you guys have those versions of those in place. Yeah, uh, one great example is like back from in 2001, we shot this movie AI mm -hmm. and it needed big virtual sets. So um, we created a, uh, with collaborating with different technology pieces, putting all the pieces together, we used a game engine to v visualize the sets. We did real time compositing on stage and these, those systems that were available in that day were very bulky and required a lot of installation and pre-planning to make that possible. Uh, today, of course, we do it much lighter weight, and now you can do it you know, with an uh, $800 headset, right? And it right. does tracking with great accuracy in certain scales. So it's really interesting how this technology has become more accessible and how we've been kind of along the ride here. So those production systems are used for production. <clears throat> a director can come in and you know, one of, someone from your team will build out a virtual set, maybe it's something that they're gonna build on location and then hold up something, a tablet, and use that as a virtual camera and have the analog, the version of their, their lenses and their camera sensors to visualize something. That's in, you know, they're using that to tell a story but what happens when you want to tell a story in that format? That's not necessarily filmmaking anymore. That's right, it's a whole new kind of storytelling. And that's actually what these experiments are about, is taking those tools and the technology that has been enabled in part by visual effects and by groups like Industrial Light and Magic who've helped create all of that technology. And then look at what kind of stories can you tell and what kind of stories are best told when you have a world that's 360 degrees around you, completely immersive. Um, so I actually believe there's still a whole bunch of stories that are best told in cinema. Just mm -hmm. like there's some stories that are best told in a book. When you want to know what people are thinking, it's probably better to write a book than do it as a movie. When you can tell it all visually, it's probably great to do it as a <clears throat> in, uh, in a movie theater. But when you want people to experience it, to feel what it's like to be present in that location, um, standing below a Millennium Falcon as it lands on your head, that's the kind of 
thing that might be perfect for a virtual reality or immersive entertainment. And the efficiencies and, and uh, your experience comes in in the shared assets. If you're going to be building a virtual <coughs> set, if you're going to be building art assets, sound assets for a traditional film, Star Wars, you know, Force Awakens, you can then incorporate those and then reconfigure them way to fill in the blanks and tell different stories. And is that how you guys have been approaching it? Yeah, absolutely. So the Millennium Falcon in this experiment that we just did um, is actually the same Millennium Falcon that's in Episode Seven. Mm. And of course, it requires some customization to be able to, you know, the one that we use for the movie takes, you know, probably 10 or 15 hours per frame to render. And here we have only 11 milliseconds. We have to do 90 frames per second. So in Unreal Engine. In the, yeah, in the Unreal Engine. So we had to do a bunch of customization to the rendering part of the engine to be able to handle the kind of geometry that we like to use here. Mm -hmm. uh, but you're absolutely right. It's about taking, making one unified production pipeline that can create films and immersive entertainment. And without... Uh, without any waste, right? Being able to fully leverage all the assets and the things in the movie for this immersive style of entertainment. Now, the experiment I tried, and you're calling these experiments because you're still, ex you are literally experimenting and your teams are trying out the different experiences, trying creating different versions of experiences. They're not all in this very high end using the HTC Vive with you know $1,000 PCs, interactive experiences. It's a whole spectrum. That's um, right. Can you go through some of the different areas that you're exploring and what interests you and Lucasfilm? about maybe just telling a story using a 360 video and all the way to a multiplayer social experience. Yeah, it, VR is really interesting in that there are you know everything from a Google Cardboard, right, which is a few dollars and you can plop any phone in there and you can actually go into a VR world. Um, and like you point out, those are 360 videos generally, right? You can do some interactions on, in those environments, but essentially if you want a, the broadest possible market you want uh, and the most people to be able to see your experience, you just want it to work with any phone. Um, and we actually think there's some pretty great storytelling opportunities that are just in that environment. Mm. Uh, telling a, a movie in, you know, in completely surrounding you in 360 degrees or telling a short story that way is really interesting. And so we've done some experiments along those lines. We did the Jurassic World Apatosaurus experience with Felix and Paul, which was a 360 degree experience um, that a dinosaur just comes right up to you. And probably one of the first times people had ever tried, certainly the first time we had ever tried doing heavily integrated visual effects in a live action environment, right? And trying to make that dinosaur look as real as possible. And uh, it's fun to get up close to that character, even though it's, it's not interactive, but it feels like it is when he breathes on you, some people you know, back up. And as you move along that spectrum to increase complexity where you're rendering things in real time, as opposed to pre-recording it, you have trade-offs, and but you also <coughs> allow for more interactions when you know, you're moving from 360 video to um, 2D playing like a video game to something that's more interactive, to touch controllers, to social multiplayer things. Eventually it does become like a video game. So is that really its end point? Because people have been making video games forever, and those are telling great stories. Yeah, so it's great that we actually already work in the Star Wars world. We actually already work with EA and DICE, who make amazing video games in the Star Wars world. Mm -hmm. And uh, they'll continue to do that, right? Um, and we actually think there's a pop there's two opportunities. There's video games in virtual reality, which we love and that we think are going to be amazing. Um, and then there's this other immersive storytelling. And both worlds have some of the components of the other. You know, video games, like you say, can tell great stories, but they're mostly about the playability. They're mostly about that fun and that, that loop that video games get in, which is the, all that interactivity and the fun and the scoring systems and whatever the achievements are going to be over the uh, life of the game. Then we think there's the immersive storytelling that's primarily about telling a story that can only be told in an immersive way. Mm -hmm. And that's the kind of exploration we're doing right now with that Trials on Tatooine, you know, making you a first person, having giving you a presence and a role in the story. Can we still tell a story around you? And is that satisfying? Yeah, there's a part of the ex experiment where I'm interacting, I'm repairing the Millennium Falcon, pushing buttons. And while you I could have seen that being like a puzzle in a game, it really was simple. It was a way to move the story along, but get me present in there and feel like I was taking part of it. Absolutely. And what's interesting is we tried a more complicated interaction. We thought it would be really interesting if those panels had a complicated interaction and like he tells you to do one thing, but you actually need to do something else. You need to hotwire this thing and it's really complicated. And it turns out, well, a couple things. We're 
early in VR. So not everyone has a lot of gaming experience, right. and most people don't have much VR experience. So to ask someone to have their first interaction with VR to be something complicated, or something where you might do it wrong and mess up the story, and we have to do a branching narrative, mm -hmm. that all of a sudden doesn't seem it's not as interesting when we tried it out. What, what was most interesting is giving people the ability to participate, get that positive reinforcement, they did oh. something right. So you don't want fail states. Where yeah. a game is very okay to have a fail state and say, <clears throat> you're gonna beat the level, try it again, here, you wanna give them just the right amount of participation and interaction, but you have the goal of telling this one sequence and one story. Exactly, and of course we still have to have the fail states in place, but um, when we watch people go through the experience now, we very rarely trigger that, and we found that when we were surveying our internal testers as they were doing it, as we gave people more of the prompts so they had more success earlier, mm -hmm. everybody came out having more fun. So, and that's what we were looking for, is like, are we telling you a story, and are you having a great experience? And um, maybe, in time, uh, as people have more exposure to VR, it will be more fun for people to have more opportunity to fail or more complicated branching. Maybe that will be something that people adapt to and learn once the language of this medium has grown, but we're kind of still learning. And speaking of prompts, I noticed that all the prompts are natural. They're intuitive to the oh, story. Good. They're characters that are telling you, you know, whether they're cues, visual cues, audio <coughs> cues, it's not visual prompts. Right. Like uh, There's no menu, there's no HUD, as you would find in a video game. So right. these are considerations that you're all putting in. Yeah, you know, our one of our primary goals is to make sure we're maintaining a sense of presence, that this feels like a real place, you know, who doesn't want to stand on Tatooine under the Millennium mm -hmm. Falcon? So we don't want to do anything to kind of break that spell if we can get you to buy into that artificial mm -hmm. world that we're creating around you. Um, so to that end, we want to give you audio cues, we want to do visual cues, like you may notice, um, you know, we're using a bunch of just classic game design techniques, like all of the handles and things you interact with have these like red and white stripes around them to drag, mm -hmm. drag your attention to them. And hopefully people don't actually notice that those cues are there, they just know what the right thing to do is. And they experiment with uh, the right thing to do and just enjoy the experience all well, the way through. One thing that they definitely know what the right thing to do is, is the lightsaber. Yes. And having a lightsaber, I mean, it seems like a natural fit when you're holding something that's like a wand light yes. track controller. So this was something with this experiment, you knew going in, you want players to hold a lightsaber. Yeah, lightsabers are a superpower in VR for sure. And they're just, they're kind of perfect for this medium. And we knew if we were gonna do a lightsaber experience, we had to do a really good job executing the details so that it delivered on the, you know, the fantasy that many of us have of mm -hmm. actually wanting to wield one of those lightsabers. Now what about force powers? That's something you've experimented with? Yeah, there's a lot to do there for sure. And you know, these the sensors already have the ability to know if you're squeezing, mm -hmm. or so you can imagine there's tons of great opportunities. I see that you're using the HTC Vive here, but in the, the promo video you guys put out, there's also Oculus Touch. You guys are having things for Gear VR, Google Cardboard, it's yeah. all across all the platforms you guys yeah. are working with. That's exactly right. We're um, platform agnostic, and we're really fortunate that we get to collaborate with some of the best platforms in the business, mm -hmm. uh, both all the ones we know about and some of the things that are coming out in the future. So it's, it's a really great place to be able to experiment with storytelling in this world. As you move on to the future experiments, without giving away what those experiences are going to be, uh, what are the things that you want to experience? What are the kind of VR? Is it more on the story side? Is it more on the VR side, interaction models? Yeah. What are the things that you look forward to? Well, we are currently in development on premium um, experiences in the space that are beyond the scale of these small scale experiments. So that's mm. really exciting to have world class writers and filmmakers collaborating with us to take the learnings that we have up to date and kind of level this up into something that is entertainment that has kind of intrinsic value all of its own. And we certainly don't think we've arrived there, but we're starting to scratch the surface and we know we have something that is interesting to explore in the space. Yeah, it's also interesting from a business side because you can make a movie, it will cost several hundred million dollars to make, but people are accustomed to spending their $10, $15 for a ticket. Yes. And the video game side, people are accustomed to spending a different amount of money, but also have different, different expectations for the length of the experience and what you can get out of that. So you're, you're that's in the future. Yeah, that's right. The business models are developing for VR, and fortunately, we're at a place in the company, at Lucasfilm, and with the support of Disney, that values this innovation and the experimentation in this space. We have a lot of films coming up. We have a lot of opportunities to look for immerse, immersive st storytelling opportunities in the space, and um, yeah, it's really exciting to be at a place where we don't fully understand everything about the business model. We think it looks promising over time. It's certainly one of the things that motivates us, but our biggest motivator is 
are we going to be able to tell stories that have emotional resonance? And we think that's not, I mean, that's what motivates us to get out of bed every morning and work on these experiences. Uh, but it's, it's also, you know, why we're in this space. And at what point does ILM X Lab leave being a research lab and become an arm of Disney and Lucasfilm to produce content? Yeah, you know, we actually are starting to make content in this space for that exact reason right now. So we actually kind of have two groups in X Lab, and we hardly ever talk about the advanced development group, but this is like the research and development team inside of X Lab, and that'll continue to be the team that you know, builds these kind of experiments for the future. Um, and then we have this team that's running right alongside us that's creating, it's called Studio, and it's actually mm -hmm. building um, these kind of immersive experiences because we have a lot of people who want to collaborate with us to make experiences for these kind of spaces right now. And a lot of people out there who want to play those experiences <laughs> as well. Thank you so much, Rob, for chatting with me. Thanks so much it's for great coming. to be here. Thanks. So that was a really cool demo. Um, it was my first time here trying out one of their ILM X Lab experiments, and they've done a few of these already. What I really thought was interesting chatting with Rob was that they're going the entire spectrum. You know, they're going to do things that are more accessible on the 360 degree video, things that can work embedded in YouTube, embedded in Facebook, uh, things that can work in Google Cardboard. They're going to do more traditional rendered experiences, what we think of as maybe, you know, flat screen video games. They're going to experiment in AR, and then they're also going to go on the high end, some premium experiences using things like the HTC Vive or the Oculus Touch, allowing people to really be present. But the thing that I think that's really interesting and what separates ILM and Lucas from, from a game studio is they're not making games. And to be fair, there are plenty of games out there with awesome stories and they're known for their stories. Game developers have worked with great writers uh, and they've given you emotional connections to those games, to those game characters. I think what Lucasfilm cares about is purely telling a story and taking away the gamification aspects, the puzzle solving aspects. That's not what they're interested in. Um, in Trials on Tatooine, uh, it will remind me a lot of that portal, uh, the Aperture Repair Robot demo that Valve put out last year at GDC. Even at the same kind of pulling mechanism. The, here I was repairing the Millennium Falcon, there you're repairing uh, an Aperture Science Robot, but that kind of first person experience where you're in the universe. Now they can build these universes in traditional films, in TV and other media and across the entire spectrum of media formats, but to be in that world and to feel the air of the Millennium Falcon, the air of Tatooine as the Falcon lands, that was someone actually flipping a switch um, and to hold the lightsaber out and deflect a blaster from a stormtrooper. That was pretty cool. We're gonna see these kind of experiences in games, but to have it solely as an experience is also gonna be interesting. So can't wait to see what else comes out of ILMX Lab. And thanks for watching. We'll have more coverage from GDC, more stuff on virtuality soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and we'll see you next time. Bye.